What's up, it's your girl, Detroit Barbie, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Club Bastards. Rich it, bitch. Rich it. Make you come in 30 seconds with the grip. No penetration, all he got in was the t all right, today we got Detroit Barbie jumping off the porch with us today. <laughs> What's the motherfucking deal? How you feeling today, sis? I'm feeling good. For sure. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Appreciate you. So what you out here working on in Atlanta? So out here in Atlanta, I'm working on my single that I'm doing right now. It's called Rich Bitch, Rich Shit. Um, I got a lot of shit going on. That shit really kind of blowing up, so. So how often do you get the chance to come out here to Atlanta? To be honest, I be in Atlanta a lot for real. Like, I've been traveling here. This is like my second home for real. Um, but this time it's just on another, you know, another note. But for sure. I'm out here a lot. For sure. And how would you compare Atlanta to back home to Detroit? Um, really, for real? That shit kind of the same, like, for real, for real. It's just like if you from Atlanta, then Detroit is out of town to you. And if you from Detroit, then Atlanta is out of town to you. But shit, that shit kind of same. We, we move fast, big city, a lot of exciting shit, a lot of talents and people. Uh, so, yeah, scammers and all that shit too. But I mean, <laughs> you know, it's all the same thing. Same thing in Detroit though too. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so how would you describe life back at home in Detroit? Um. Life back at home in Detroit is like really what you make it for real. Uh, honestly, I came from, you know what I'm saying, the trenches, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I've been, it's kind of cool, but. It's just like, uh, yeah. I feel that. You know what I'm saying? It's cool, but I mean, it's what you make it for real. I That's why I'm that. here. I feel that. So what part of the city are you from? I'm from the west side of Detroit. I'm from the west side. I'm definitely a west side female. I'm from the Dexter Linwood area. Okay. How do you feel each side differs from the city? Like, how would the west side differ from the east? Or the, you know okay, what I mean? so, ha, I mean, we all, we, we all lit as fuck, for real, for real. But, I mean, it's like certain things, like the high label is like you money. Motherfuckers get money on the east side. On the west side, we bougie, so it's the same thing. But it's like, you know what I'm saying, they a little, you know, Trenchy, a little trenchier than, you know what I'm saying, the West, but I mean, I fuck with the East Side and the West Side, so. That's hard. How would you describe your childhood coming up? Um, my childhood coming up was really cool, for real. Um, I was a cheerleader and uh, major in all my life, so I've been entertaining for forever. Um, I guess it was cool. I liked it. My, I mean, Detroit Barbie, I liked it. My little Barbie dolls. I had my doll houses. Shit wasn't really that bad in my household. I mean, shit, my dad left when I was like 12, but, and then shit got different, a little bit different, but my childhood wasn't all that bad, though. That's all right. When would you say you jumped off the porch? When? Right motherfucking shit, right before I walked in this bitch. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, no. <laughs> but, um, I say like two years ago though, honestly, because like shit, um, I didn't even know I was gonna be no rapper for real. Somebody was just like, we gonna freestyle in the car. And I'm like, all right, so we playing around and they're like, you kind of sound good. So then this one dude uh, was like, come to the studio and do a song, you know what I'm saying? Do a song, whatever. So me and my friends went playing around and I was the only one that really could really rap. Everybody else sounded like, you know what I'm saying, crazy, mm -hmm. and they was like, bro, you really should do this, like, and I wrote it, the verse made sense, it, everything made sense, and they was like, bro, you should write, so, and do music, so then I started doing it, and, like, this was two years ago, and I'm here now, I'm like, you never no. thought it would happen, no, I didn't think I was gonna be no, uh, no rapper, I wanted to be an actress, for real, mm. I didn't think I was gonna come out as fire as I am with this rapping shit, that That's shit crazy, hard. So how did you get into formal dancing? So I got into formal dancing, I was about like 18 years old, for real. Um, dancing is just the same thing like it is here in Atlanta, like it's some money in, it, in, in Detroit, for real. And basically, I started off, me and my friend was like, let's go to the strip club to get some food. We went to the Crazy Horse. They said, um, let's get some food. So we go there and get some food. And then the uh, manager was like, you know, they try to catch them young. Yeah, they like, you know, y'all y'all should uh, work here or whatever. We be having like uh, industries and uh, artists out. And then he said, um, 
He said, uh, you should do this. I said, uh, I don't think so. And I said, and if I wanted to, I ain't even got nothing to wear. He said, we got all it in the back rooms. We go in the dressing room. They got uh, the dance shoes, the outfits, the makeup artists and shit. I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, come on, bitch, we drunk. Let's, you know what I'm saying, me and my friend. So we got dressed and then they had Bobby Valentino and then it's an old rapper, uh, one of our old rappers, uh, KDZ. They was like, he was in there. And I got on stage and he threw hella money on me. And I'm like, oh, okay. So at that point, it was just $500, you know what I'm saying? But to me, it's a lot, 18. So. In one night, yeah. Yeah, so 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 I went home, like, okay. I went back the next day, I made 1500 Okay, first of all, my check that I was getting on Friday was 592 So I was like, yeah, uh, fuck y'all. It just made sense. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I shit, I'm gonna strip her down, like it. <laughs> <laughs> when and why did you move to Canton? When and why did I move to Canton? I moved to Canton because, for one, I was living in Akron at first. I was in Akron and um, with a dude, with my boyfriend or whatever, I moved out there. So um, after, after that, me and him broke up and shit, I wound up meeting some friends and stuff while I was dancing. My one friend, she was from out the Canton way. So um, I started going there a lot. I wound up getting a regular job there. And then I started fucking with Canton. But Canton dope though, for real. I fuck with Canton, like I really do. That's real. What would you say is the biggest life lesson you learned growing up? Life lesson I learned? Mm -mm, I don't even know. Uh, I guess I do know. Um, basically, uh, po being positive, being positive, period. Like, a lot of people don't, don't even know how or don't where, even where to start for real. And the reason why I'm answering it like that and saying being positive is because you can be negative and you can say negative things and negative things will happen. You can say positive things and speak that into yourself, and then everything is great. So I've learned that because I remember talking down on myself and nothing would ever work. When I started talking highly of myself, everything started happening for me. I feel that. So when would you say you started making music? Um, yeah, like two years ago. Two years ago, I started making music. And what motivated you to start? My best friend. My best friend. She know, like, listen, I love music my whole life, so uh, I eat, sleep, and breathe that shit. Like, I'm talking about I'll take you all the way back to when your grandma was a baby. I listen to old music that old. So she, like, every time you sing or rap a song, you know all the words. And it's been like that since I was a little kid. My mommy started saying it, too. So she, like, you know every song, and when you rap it, you be on beat, you be on rhythm, even though it ain't your song, it's they song, and you got a voice, like, and you should do it. And, you know, so that's... That was the beginning of the rapping in the car and all that shit yeah. and how that came up. So I don't know. So yeah, it just went for her. She inspired me to do it. She pushed me every day too. That's hard. Who would you list as some of your musical influences? Um, Lil Kim, that's my number one. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion, uh, Mulatto. And when would you say you started taking music serious? This year, the beginning of this year, when I got like my new managers and stuff like that. And then it made me start taking it serious because they believed in me, so they made me believe in myself. For sure. What are your current thoughts on the rap game right now? My current thoughts on the rap game right now, I don't know. Uh, things have changed so much. Um, I still think it's lit, you know what I'm saying? I think all music is lit, so. Uh, it's different, definitely from old school. I'm a, definitely an old school lover. That's me all day long. I can't even lie to you, I'm a 90s, I'm a 90s girl. But the new school had me turned though. It keep me, it keep me feeling alive. Yeah. How do you feel about the state of female rap right now? It's dope as fuck. We lit. We all lit. We all lit lit. We taking over for real. Yeah. And that's dope, man. That's dope as fuck. What would you say is the biggest risk you took that paid off? <laughs> Becoming a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna cap. That's real though. <laughs> I ain't gonna cap be becoming a stripper because I mean, that's a big risk to take. It's hard to tell your family that. It's hard to get out there and if a family family member come in, it's hard to run out, you know what I'm saying? It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a big risk for me. And, uh, I mean, it's getting me where I need to be. It's putting me in the right places. When I'm, uh, you know, when I'm fucked up, I can always go and do it. You know what I'm saying? So. How would you describe the music scene back at home in Detroit right now? Oh, come on now. 
Man, Detroit is lit. We on for real. We're definitely talented. We are definitely talented people. That's where a lot that's where a lot of artists is. You know, a lot of people listen to all the artists that got home for real. They inspire me too. They motivate me too. They got me feeling like I'm a G. Yeah. Do you feel Detroit supports female rappers coming out the city? I don't really know the answer to that for real, for real, because I really didn't um I didn't really start rapping in the D. I started rapping in Canton. So we got some female artists that's in it, but then I mean it depends on where people be wanting to be for real. But I feel like we do, they do support. I think everybody support female rappers anywhere. No, oh, for real. Talk about your new single, Rich Bitch. All right, so uh I come come in 30 seconds with the grip. Hey, period. <laughs> but um, I mean shit, that shit lit as fuck. Like everybody need to tap in. You can find it. Look up Detroit Barbie Rich Bitch Rich Shit. It's going. That shit turned as fuck. It's gonna have you shaking some ass. It's gonna have you getting a bag after it, period. So talk about Buss It. Buss It? How you know about Buss It? Come on now. Boy, bye. <laughs> All right, look so. So look though, bust it, bust it down, make it clap, and do a free. Ladies get that money, turn them up, make them spend 50, 50 what? Bands, period, bust it. <laughs> I know that's right. What about money, power, respect? Now that's my motherfucking shit. Y'all already know, that's probably your favorite too. Look at you, <laughs> smile, that was your shit. Well, um, money, power, respect. Um, that was actually written by a very close friend of mine. Um, we really was in there, you know, I love Lil' Kim, so we was gonna, we wanted to uh, reiterate money, power, respect, even nice. yeah. Money, yeah. So basically, we put it and flipped it into my own way. And then I was like, I wanna kinda come hard so people can understand that I can come hard too. I don't just be all, you know, I don't always be with the animated twerk club rap. I can really spit for real too, so. Are there plans for an upcoming project? Yes, 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 yes. Um, for a minute I wanted to do an album, but I ain't gonna lie, I've been tearing up the samples. So I think I'm gonna do a mixtape first, so I'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, get, get everything out there, because I've been sampling up some stuff, because we needed to. Somebody had to do it. Yeah. You feel me? So, uh, yeah. Talk to us about your grind as an independent artist. Ooh, we on the ground right now. <laughs> Talk about this grind. Nigga almost didn't make it, but we're here, yeah. you know? So that's the grind, you know? Sometimes you might not always make it, but we here. Yeah. And we gonna get there. Gonna get there. Okay. What would you say is the biggest challenge that comes along with being an independent artist? Ooh. Um, judgments, being able to have tough skin, being able to being able to just mix the good with the bad, figure out which one is outweighing, uh, living a regular life and then adding that on to it. Uh, man, it's hard work, period. Having to be away from your kids. I do, I am a mother, so having to be away from your kids and have to look at them and, and get them a kiss on the forehead and let them understand that, that you out here doing it you know what I'm saying, for them. But um, leaving a nine to five, <laughs> don't know when you're gonna get your next check. Yeah. You know, but that's what the strip club for. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, it's hard, it's hard work. I feel that. Would you ever consider signing to a major label situation? <sighs> You know, it gets tricky. I mean, if it was somebody like Ross or, or T.I. You know, or, you know, you know, see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why would you even ask such a thing? But outside of that, though, um, in being independent, though, you can't get no better than that, though, for real, because you're keeping your own money. I got a team. I got a whole team. Yeah. So we can get there. We can get there and survive without a label. We can make our own label. We can grow because we got literally a whole team yeah. already. That's what I was blessed with. So. What else are you working on right now? 
working on these hot Cheetos. <laughs> I'm totally <back> up. <laughs> I'm working on being a comedian, side girl. But um, you got that down pat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, honestly, um, we're just working on we like grind thing. We just on the ground right now. We just working on building a fan base and everything like that because a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, didn't know me so they getting to know me now. I'd rather the whole world get to know me so that way when I really start doing stuff that money will come in like I needed to. Straight like that. Yeah. Any last words and shout outs? Ah, I'm the motherfucking porch bitches. <laughs> Fuck they know about it. That's it. <laughs> Detroit Bob, we appreciate you having you today, sis. <laughs> I appreciate you having you. I'm about to twerk on that porch <laughs> when it comes to camera. No, you can do it. You can do it with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> rich bitch, rich shit. Rich shit. Make you come in 30 seconds with the grip. Uh -huh. No penetration, all he got in was the tip. It went lit, so I